What's up guys, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to do an install on a complete PowerStop Z36 brake kit. So that's gonna involve the drilled and slotted rotors and the new pads. Before we get into this, this install will pretty much work for any truck that's 2015 all the way up to 2020, which is what we have here currently. But it's worth noting that when you go to order your kit, you wanna make sure you order one for the right year range. Usually 15 to 17 are the same and 18 to 20 are slightly different. And the other thing to consider is gonna be whether or not you have an electronic rear parking brake. This truck does have the electronic parking brake, so we got a kit specific for that. And it's gonna look a little different in the back than your truck might if it's still a manual pedal. But those are just things to note beforehand. Now, with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the install. First things first, you obviously wanna get your wheel off so you have your rotor and your caliper exposed. Then for the caliper, we're gonna come back and undo these two half inch bolts that are holding the centerpiece so we can remove this with the pads. And then we'll also do the two fatter bolts on the back that are gonna be a 21 so we can get the entire caliper off. For the main section of the caliper here, I'm gonna undo this 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the bracket for the line. So that way we have a little bit more play and I can move it over here to this ratchet strap to hold it up and that way I don't risk this falling or pulling and breaking the line. Now we're gonna pull these two big 21 millimeter bolts out the back. If your truck's older and these are rusted on, you may need a little bit of extra leverage or a cheater bar, but we're gonna use a breaker bar to get it loose. Since we're doing the drilled and slotted rotors with this kit, we're gonna pull the factory rotors off. And you can see that ours came loose pretty much right away because it's new. But if yours has been on here a while and it's rusted, go ahead and just hit this a little bit with a mallet or a hammer, give it a couple taps, it should come free. And then you can just slide it right off the lug studs. Now on the bench, you're gonna to wanna to grab this part of the caliper bracket and we're gonna pull the pins out at the top so once again, obviously our truck's new, this grease looks good, but what we're gonna do is wipe off that grease. We've got a new packet from PowerStop. We'll re-grease everything, stick the pins back in here, and then we're also gonna grease and put on these new clips for the pads. You want to make sure that this little rubber seal just pops back over that lip so it doesn't come free. Okay, so we have everything greased up. We've got the new clips on here. As I mentioned before, you definitely wanna replace these if your truck's older, it has some more miles on the brakes, but we did it anyways. So that's all looking good. And then you can see we have our new power stop pads here as well. The thing you'll note with these pads is on the older trucks, there was typically an inner and an outer, and one of them had some raised bumps on it. So you'll see most of the kits now come with this piece of paper. There's the raised edges for that inner pad. The new ones don't have that, they look the same. So when you install these, it really doesn't matter at this point, but we're gonna put the new pads in, get everything put back together, and then we should be looking pretty good. All right, there we go. And you can see that these rotors are actually labeled. They're side specific and obviously front and back are different. So just make sure you put the right one on. Thank you. 
With the bracket on here, make sure you go in and torque all of your caliper bolts to factory spec, and we'll do the same thing for the actual piston part of the caliper here in a minute. So as you can see here, I've got the top part of our caliper with the pistons, and with our truck, the brake pad wear was already so minimal that we really didn't have to push the pistons in, but I still wanted to demonstrate. Normally, you'd take your pad, push it against this. You're gonna wanna put a C-clamp over it or some sort of compressor tool. And then if it's got a ways to go for travel and your pads are really worn down, you'll wanna crack that bleeder valve, squeeze the C-clamp down so it brings those pistons back in. That way it'll fit over the new pads. Then once you've got that done, close the bleeder, you'll go back and bleed the whole brake system later just to make sure it's safe and then you can mount the caliper. But like I said, ours are pretty much good to go. Sometimes you can get a turn or two to get the pistons a little farther in without cracking anything. But we're gonna take this off, pop the top of the caliper back on and get this all reassembled. Last thing we gotta do to wrap up the front here is just reconnect this bracket for the brake lines and the ABS line. With all this tied up, everything's good to go. Let's move to the back. Doing the rear brakes isn't gonna be much different from the front. So we're gonna start with these two bolts on the back of the caliper. They're half inch right here, but there is a nut attached on this side and I don't have any wrenches that are skinny enough to fit onto that nut. So we're gonna use channel locks just to kind of hold that outer edge on there. And it's not typically locked on too tight and we should be able to turn the other side with a ratchet. If you have an impact, you can hit them with that too. But I know a lot of people get upset about using impacts here. So we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. Now for the caliper bracket, we're gonna have some bigger bolts on the back that are 15 16 So once again, if your truck's older and a little more rusted, you might need a cheater bar to get this, but we'll get it with a breaker bar and then a ratchet, and we'll do the same for the bottom. We're gonna pull these pins and you'll just wanna pop it off with that rubber cap, clean the old grease off. We'll put some fresh grease on both of these and we can also put the new clips on here for the pads. Alright, we've got the new clips on, everything's greased up, looking good. You can see here that the pads are going to kind of just slot right in the same way that the factory ones did, so that's not too different. We'll take this back over to the truck and start reinstalling everything the same way we took it off. With the rear rotor here, same story as the front. If yours is rusted or seized on here, give that a couple taps with a mallet and break it free. Ours is already just trying to come off, so slide that off there. And now we got our new drilled and slotted one. As you can see, once again, labeled properly, just make sure you put the right side on the right side.
With the piston part of the rear caliper here, do the same thing as you did in the front. Just go ahead and put the pad on there, put a clamp on it, compress it down. If you have an electronic parking brake, putting a C-clamp on this is gonna be a little bit harder than just having one of the compression tools that you twist from the front. So that's something to consider. But once you have that piston pulled in, then you can slide this unit back on. All right, everybody, that's basically gonna be a wrap on this power stop brake kit. But there is one last important thing I wanted to note, and that's in your box, you're gonna have a little guide here for the break-in procedure for these new pads and rotors. And it is important that you do this. A lot of people don't even check the back of this piece of paper to find out that there's the instructions here for it. But essentially what this means is you're gonna to need to go out, find yourself a flat little run of road where you can get up to 40 and break down to 10 miles an hour. And you're gonna do that a couple times, then you'll do 35 to five, and then run the truck around for about five minutes, just nice and easy letting those brakes cool off. You'll typically smell them start to get really hot once you've done the beginning of the break-in procedure and that's good. You're trying to get everything set in and really bed in those pads. But this is something that you don't want to skip on. A lot of people don't even pay attention to it. So if you have questions on that, just refer to your little guide. Now, with all that out of the way, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this is, of course, our 2020 giveaway F-150. We're coming down to the end of the build now. We've got a lot of cool parts on this truck and one lucky winner is gonna be walking away with the whole thing. So if you do wanna get entered or learn more details on this truck, we'll have a link down in the description that will shoot you over to our giveaway page, as well as some links to these brake kits if you do wanna pick one up for your vehicle. So with all that out of the way, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.